Fraud, scams, red flags, how are you to protect yourself? Welcome back to part two of Finances Personal with Acting Sergeant Jennifer Horner of the Divisional Mobilization Unit with Peel Regional Police. And we will discuss all of the new types of fraud and scams that you need to be aware of. So we, you know, we, we touched upon uh, the email phishing scams. Well, I got one today. Mm-hmm. And basically I am, uh, I get an ATM card donation for $4.5 million. Oh. And my, you know, my email ID has been selected for an ATM card and it'll be sent uh, to me, but I need to make a payment of $50 US, not Canadian, but US for the security keeping fee. And, you know, they've given me all these emails of people that I have to get in touch with, but they want my full name, my telephone, postal address, state, country, and they want my driver's license. Yeah. So right there, you know, you're going to give away 50, but you're going to give away your identity. Yes. And ultimately, what they're going to be doing is, is that through identity theft, you know, these scammers ultimately will open up credit cards or other forms of service in your name, such as a cell phone. And there'll be a lot of these cards out there that you won't realize for some time. And then all of a sudden, when your credit rating is impacted, you'll realize that all of these cards have been opened without your without your knowledge, and they've racked up thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. The other one I got today too. This is <laughs> a very good day. Yeah. <laughs> Last week I got ten of those uh, CRA calls. Today yes. I got probably about ten emails. But yes. this one is, you know, dear Microsoft user. Yeah. This is the last time we notified you, we're going to stop, you know, verify now, count kindly take a minute to complete our email verification. Now, if you already have an email address, why do you need to verify it? Right. What's yes. going to happen? Yes. And, you know, you bring up a great one with the Microsoft one, because we do have, and there has been a trend where people will be at home and they'll receive a phone call again, out of the blue, indicating to them that their computer has an, has a virus. Yes. And so it's the computer virus. scam. And so then you're sitting there going, okay. And they're like, well, let me, can you log in remotely? Can you show us what's going on? Well, what they're doing is, is they're actually downloading something that's actually spyware or malware. So they can actually see what you're doing in terms of your banking and, and knowing your passwords and things like that. So again, Microsoft doesn't ever call out of the blue or nor does Apple to say that there's something wrong with your computer. If your computer isn't working, you know it. And you're going to take it to somewhere where you're going to have someone look at it and nobody's going to be accessing it remotely. But the other thing is too, and again, I guess with COVID again, this is another trend is being so much online, there's going to be these pop-ups that are going to come out and these pop-ups are going to say your computer has a virus. And so you're going to look at that and you're thinking, well, I'm working from home. My kids are online. I can't have a virus on my computer. This isn't going to work. And then there's going to be a phone number that they're going to ask you to call, or there's going to be a link. And they're going to ask you to click on that link. And when you do that, it's going to take you to this apparent or supposed company that's going to help you fix the the virus on your computer. But all they're doing really is either taking forms of money in iTunes that you'll never get back. They'll say that they fix it when they've done nothing. Or again, they'll have put some form of spyware or malware on your computer to kind of dig around and see if they can't get some personal information. So again, if you're ever on your computer and um, it's, uh, it's saying to you, you know, click here, don't click on any any links that you don't know, don't click on any pop-ups. But if it is frozen, just unplug your computer from the wall and let it power down. And then um, you can kind of restart it. Those are good words of wisdom. Uh, What about, I just thought about this. I've I've received a few of these as well, uh, where, you know, it's, I have been chosen for this job. Mm -hmm. And they send me a text and I have to apply to it. And they'll pay me, you know, $100 to $500 an hour to deliver something. Yes. So the job scam. And again, we've seen a number of those. And with COVID, you know, and the idea of everybody, the job opportunities, you know, are at a minimum. And yet, you know, you think about all these students that are having to save now for next fall Mm -hmm. and, you know, not having the same because businesses are closed. So it's realistic to think that, well, all these jobs are going to move to online. And so these job scams, they will apply onto a job website or through some you know, posting, and they're going to be notified, oh, we want you to be our our representative for our company, work from home, 
you know, make $400 instantly, or, you know, going to offer you some great uh, amount of money as part of the job. But the key thing in terms of any online job is one is that the way the scam works is that they're going to indicate to you one that they're going to send you money and you haven't even worked, which again, we all know that in an, in a job environment, you got to work for a couple of weeks before you're getting any form of payment, right. but they're like, we're going to send you a check for training and for equipment. Can you cash that check, but then send a thousand dollars to our advertising third party company. So this is a, um, third party check scam. So anytime anybody says to you, can you cash this check and send money to a third party? Do not do it. Uh, Again, checks take some time to clear through the bank. Even though you've put that check in, it isn't verified. And even if you can withdraw money from your account, that's based on your good standing with the bank and your withdrawal agreements. Nothing is verified with that check the minute you put that in. So it's important to know if you withdraw that thousand dollars and send it to a third party, and that check bounces, you are on the hook for that thousand dollars. The bank will not cover you for that uh, just simply because it's your responsibility to know and verify what's going into your account. So a thousand dollars when you're a young student to now be in debt to the bank is a big, big impact. So that's a really big red flag is anytime these companies want to send you a check for two thousand dollars, having not done any work, not knowing you and then asking you to send to a third party is that is a third party check scam. And that's a big red flag. And then also, these jobs are going to say to you, well, okay, we want you to be our Canadian representative in terms of accepting money into your account, as part of our customers. And then you're like, okay, well, I'm just they're just utilizing my bank account to take payments. So where can I go wrong? But then when the money gets, they're going to ask you to send the money out. All those all that money, all those funds that are coming into your account are victims from other scams. So ultimately, they're utilizing your bank account to launder money. So when everything comes down to where all these victims are reporting it, it's going to be your bank account and your name as the main source of this fraud, even though you had accepted this supposed job, taking payments from customers and then forwarding them on. So again, don't let any organization or business use your personal banking account to process payments. Any reputable business has their own account. They do their own accounting. They do their own timekeeping. They own the bookkeeping. So they're not going to utilize your account for that purpose. Okay. So now the most emotional of them all. Let's talk Mm. about romance scams. Three years ago today, when you and I met, (laughs) we talked about romance scams. And in January, I had Shelly Frost and Linda Young on. And Linda was scammed Mm $150,000 from, you know, the love of her life, a man that she'd never met. And I have a feeling that a lot of people have been scammed during COVID because, we all get lonely. We're all at home alone. And I've talked to some single girlfriends and they're, you know, they said, I, I, I feel really lonely. So let's talk about romance scams. Yeah. And I did watch that interview, uh, that show that you did. And I, it was great. Thank you. And I think you also did another piece with it with a psychiatrist. Yes. Uh, and I thought that was really great too. Thank and you. yeah, I think with COVID more than ever, people are lonely. And then again, pairing that with the online component, you know, there is this increased sort of connection that people are trying to make online more than ever. And I've really noticed more of a trend where these connections are, you know, they're attempting to make these connections through social media, through such platforms as Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat, where people are receiving random requests from people uh, who they don't know, but saying, hey, do you want to be friends? Or, you know, I saw your picture. And these messages are, are, are a lot and they're coming in. And so people are looking at them. And again, they're seeing a profile. They're seeing a picture. They see that, you know, they have some posts on their page and think, well, that must be somebody that's real. And unfortunately, again, you know, those images can be taken from other places. Those profiles can be, you know, stolen at some point. Uh, but I really think that it's unfortunate, like in COVID with people, be, like people being lonely, that they're just looking for that connection and these fraudsters know how to play on that connection. And it's, you know, it's all about your heart and it's all about feeling good. And I mean, who doesn't want to be loved, right? We all want to be loved, whether it's, you know, from a spouse or our pet, (laughs) we all want that. Yes. And, and that's just it. I think with 
COVID especially, because a lot, one of the red flags with the romance scam is the fact that the individual who you're communicating with may indicate they're overseas, or they may indicate they're in another province or state or, or another country. And that, you know, now while well, limited travel, it's greater excuse that they can't see you in person. And so then they keep playing on this. Well, I'll see you in some time or we can meet face to face or they'll make up some excuse about technology where they can't FaceTime or they'll make up some excuse about why they can't talk live on the phone. And so why it's always through text messaging or why it's always through some form of, of, of media as opposed to on the phone live. But COVID unfortunately is reinforcing those sort of boundaries that we're now taking as acceptable when again, you know, these, these types of romances, this is the way that they start and they groom and they can spend all that extra time grooming. And again, with COVID being home so much on our devices, they spend that extra time and we're there, you know, available to them in terms of communicating with them all the time. And they, they just spend that time grooming that, that victim. So if someone is, uh, you know, a victim of a romance scam or anything else, uh, what are the steps? Should they contact the local police department? Uh, yes, absolutely. So contact your local police department within your jurisdiction, and then also making a report to the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre as well. So what are some other safety tips or scam warnings that you can give us just so that, you know, we're aware or if we hear something, it triggers us to be aware and, and on guard? Um, well, I think one, I, I think about online shopping. And again, like we're, it's really a matter of, again, we're really forced to do all this stuff online now. So making sure that you're going to a website that you know is secure. And one of those ways is being sure that you're buying items and you're utilizing websites that are a large, reputable uh, retailer. And if you're going to go to a website or you're going to see an ad and you're going to click on an ad, whether it's on Instagram or Facebook or other forms of social media, and you've never really heard of them and their website doesn't give too many details on return policy, shipment times, exchange rates, um, and you're not really too sure about the source of it, it really is buyer beware. Because you're putting on this payment information of your credit card and personal information and hope some item will show up. But if this company isn't located within Canada, you know, there's limits in terms of how you can, as a consumer, get any recourse for those types of items. So it's really being a savvy buyer and really kind of knowing the risks when you get into some of these ads that pop up. One, in terms of the actual shipment, is it going to arrive? Uh, who, who am I giving my payment information to? And is it secure within that organization? And just the fact of quality. I mean, we've all seen those funny ads where what it looks like on social media and then when you buy it. So it's really, it's really tough, but we have to be savvy in terms of what we're buying and really know the risks when we're doing a lot of online shopping. And I think this is really important right now because revenge shopping has become a thing where, you know, people have been at home, uh, not dressing up. And now, you know, we're looking forward to dressing up and, you know, putting your heels back on, wearing a nice dress, wearing some designer clothing. And so now, because people haven't been shopping as often, the revenge shopping is the big thing now. And, and the problem with that is they're big ticket items. They're expensive Chanel jackets or, you know, whatever else there is out there. Yeah. And, and really, it, it's so hard to know what you're getting is the true actual item. Uh, and I think it's important too, if you're going to be doing a lot of online uh, shopping, it's great in terms of utilizing a credit card. If you're going to go to a website, if the website says HTTPS, it means that that website is secure. So it meets certain uh, internet protocol in terms of some of the features with respects to your privacy and your personal information. And a lot of times you'll see there's a little green lock beside HTTP. And that, again, just indicates that it is a secure website. So if you're going to a website that's not secure, just be very mindful because that website hasn't adopted certain internet protocols that can ensure your you know, safety as a consumer when you're submitting your payment information and your personal information. And then if you are gonna be doing any online shopping, make sure you check your credit card statements. It's really important to check them. I mean, with online banking and with our mobile apps, I mean, it's great because we can look at our daily transactions per second. 
you know, in terms of what I bought and, and being having this awareness of our, our financial situation. It's important with credit cards because sometimes scammers don't scam you out of a $5,000 item on your credit card because that'll send off a lot of alarm bells. But sometimes it's just a pair of shoes for $150, which might not seem out of the ordinary in any of your normal day shopping. It's not going to put up any red flags somewhere. So it's good to go through your statements and it's good to go through your statements every or before every 90 days, because outside of 90 days, credit card companies will hold you responsible for that tra transaction, even if you've disputed it. So it's good to just, I think, in good financial practice anyways, to kind of know what's coming in, know what you're buying, know what your expenses are, but really review those transactions on your credit card really well. See, I, I think that's important as well, because sometimes if you have a monthly payment and you've canceled it, but they still keep charging yeah. you, you'll know yes. that you're still being charged. And other times, if you've got the monthly payment and you've called them and renegotiated the monthly payment, you want to make sure that it's lower than what it was previously. So I, I think those are incredible words of wisdom because we need to understand our financial statements, our monthly yeah. statements to know exactly what we're being charged and whether that is something that we've charged. I can tell you right now during COVID, I've had three credit cards compromised. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And so, and, and one, it, you know, they were all small purchases, mm -hmm. but you know, it's, it's not like I go anywhere. It's not like I'm right. doing a lot yeah. of shopping, but yeah. I've had three of my credit cards compromised. Yeah. And so you can see that it's, the risks are still there, even though we're at home. Mm -hmm. We're not out. And I think too, it's really important that with respects to your PIN number, when you are utilizing your PIN number on your bank card or your credit card, one to cover up your PIN wherever you go, just to ensure that there isn't anybody who might be shoulder surfing or who might want the opportunity to see your PIN number and then maybe try to, uh, you know, distract you in the parking lot to take your wallet and some form of distraction theft. But then also too, it's, it's just important to know that we don't share it. And if you've shared it with someone and you were in a relationship or you were roommates, uh, it's important that you change it and you don't allow anyone else to have your PIN number because once that PIN number is utilized, I mean, the banks are, you know, really not going to be held, you know, they're going to hold you responsible for those transactions because it's written in your cardholder agreement that you've got to make your PIN number pretty unique and that you are supposed to, you know, not share it. Um, cause that's really with that chip and pin technology with that chip and with that pin number, I mean, that's a great verification in terms of, you know, the prevention of fraud. So, you know, be sure that you protect your pin number and you don't share it. The other fraud too, uh, there's a scam where you'll get a text or email saying, Hey honey, I just forgot our pin. Can you tell me what the pin is? Yeah. Again, like, and it's call them on the phone, <laughs> right? Like and it, it, if you don't recognize the phone number and you don't know who that individual is, call them over the phone. I think it's just really important. Um, we're just very, so mindful now we don't get lulled. And again, to this false sense of comfort zone, you know, we don't have to be over the top in terms of our, our, but I think there's just small, simple things. It's just good general practice that we can carry with us every day. And I think we can't do a fraud prevention show without talking about passwords, because those are really important. Yes. And so passports are not an everyday carry item. So if you are traveling, absolutely carry your passport, but don't have it in your purse every day in your everyday travels going from one place to the other. If your purse is stolen or it's lost, that can be sold and that it's a benefit to any identity uh, like ID theft or any fraudster who wants to perform identity theft. And I think it's really important too, and we talk about this in our presentations with respects to home safety and personal safety, but when you're keeping all of your valuables at home, and I, I, I mean jewelry and everything else, but including your identification documents, your birth certificates, your social insurance number, your passport, and any other you know immigrant status papers, you need to secure those in a place that nobody can find them. In the cases of break and enter, um, they're going to go to your bedroom. That's one of the first places that they're going to go as somebody who breaks into your home and they're going to rifle through your drawers. So if you've got that fancy top drawer, which I know we all do, that's a kind of a catch all for some change and some cash. That's the first place that they're going to look. So don't put those valuable documents there, put them in a place that nobody would ever look uh, for them or in a secure place in the home that nobody would have the abilities to take it. So there's such 
um, important value in those identity documents, we have to treat them just like our watches and jewelry that we want to keep safe in our home as well. And you know, that that's a really good um, point too, because I know of someone who had their purse stolen recently, uh, probably about a year ago, and this person didn't travel anywhere, yet the passport was inside their purse. So yeah. they lost a whole bunch, especially their identity. Yes. And social insurance number cards, like we have SIN cards and I have the hard card. Now they issue it on a piece of paper, which is much different. But with the SIN card, it's not an everyday carry item either. Mm -hmm. It's not considered an actual form of ID. Like you have your driver's license, your majority card or your health card. So again, keep though that at home along with your birth certificate and don't keep any of those in your wallet as an everyday item. And so I just want to, uh, well, last, last, uh, last tip. When you look at computer passwords and you look at passwords for whether it's, you know, Twitter or LinkedIn or emails or whatever, some people think that, oh, if I just type in a password uh, and use it in a foreign language, I'll be safe. Yeah, it, well, and it's just, it, got, it has to be something that actually isn't even unique to you. Like you, it's got to be something that no one would ever kind of connect you to anything. And not having the same password across the board. Here's the challenge. Everything we, we need now has a login. If you think about, you know, you want to order something online, you got to have an account with this store and with this store. So, I mean, to try to keep track of all those logins, it would seem that having the same one would be perfect and ideal. But once they get a hold of that single one, they can start going through a whole bunch of accounts and start to get into these accounts and, and start to take them over. So it's really important that, you know, it really has to be very obscure and not even anything that's remotely related to you in order to, to ensure that they don't catch on to it. So in closing, where can people go to find more fraud prevention tips? One great resource is uh, the antifraudcenter.ca website. So that's the Canadian Anti-Fraud uh, Centre uh, website, but it's antifraudcenter.ca. Uh, and great resource with so much information in terms of fraud prevention, current trends, uh, recent reports in terms of, you know, what have been the recent trends and what's been reported, the amount of loss that has affected Canadians. And I know that every police service within your jurisdiction or with across the province has websites and has areas within their websites that are dedicated to crime prevention and fraud is a big part of that. So visit your local website. I encourage anybody to go on to your local police agency website. There's a wealth of information from how to make a report as well as the police serve the divisions in which that they serve along with any of that crime prevention or awareness material. And, and just speaking of the police department, uh, there are a lot of people that are selling a lot of whatever it is that they have at home, whether it's clothing or furniture or whatever. And I've heard that if you're going to, uh, participate in the secondhand economy, the best place to do this is in the police parking lot. Yes. And so, and I'm so glad that you brought that up because we at Peel Police have a buy and sell exchange zone. So each division has two designated parking spots for a buyer and a seller with respects to any online buying and selling. But I know other police jurisdictions as well, but ultimately, yes, utilize a police division parking lot. They're well lit, they're monitored. I mean, there's police cruisers going in and all of the time, people making reports. It's a busy time and it's a busy area. So it's important that you, you pick a, a spot that's safe and police divisions and these designating, designated parking spots are the perfect place to do these exchanges. And if you are going to, and you indicate to them, let's meet at this division, if they don't want to, then you know what, it's probably not worth your time at that point in terms of your safety. But a lot of times these, these online buying and selling, they're going to want to meet you in a place that's very remote, kind of later at night, out of the eyes of any surveillance, where it's going to be in front of a house that may be near a park entranceway or a park laneway, so that when you're pulling up, it's the appearance of your, it's at the residence, but then they're going to go into this park area. So it's really picking a place that's super safe to do these exchanges. So any last words of wisdom? You know, I think like we've mentioned it is to slow down and remember that, you know, with it being your hard earned money that you do your due diligence and you really think through the process, whether it's going to be a phone call that comes in claiming to be some form of government or it's an email indicating some form of a prize. 
in those moments of excitement or emergency, we need to really slow down and we really need to um, think through the process. And I think it's really important to talk to people. There's no shame in asking for help. There's no shame in going to somebody when maybe you've made an initial payment and you realize it's a mistake. Talk to somebody right away. Because unfortunately, these scammers can continue to try to pull people in. And again, they play on those emotions. And then there's that feeling of shame that, that you know, this victim is feeling when ultimately they shouldn't. Um, and they really need to come forward and really talk about it. And there's such strength, I think, in talking about it. And there's such value because there's such a learning point to so many other people. Uh, but I think that those are some really important points when, when it comes to uh, fraud. Acting Sergeant Jennifer Horner, thank you so much. It was so great to see you again. Yes, you too. Thank you. Thank you. As children, we were always told not to talk to strangers. Do not talk to strangers. But now in our adult lives, this sentence is more important than ever when it comes to scams and fraud. So don't be afraid to hang up the phone when an unknown person calls you and is too nice, trying to get personal information to steal from you or is threatening you with an arrest to scam money from you. In Canada, you will not be arrested for fictitious money that they claim you owe Canada Revenue Agency or because someone tells you that your social insurance number has expired. It doesn't. Be diligent and do second guess yourself if things don't seem quite right and always look for the red flags. And if things don't seem quite proper, always do your research. Scammers are now stealing legitimate corporate logos and creating their own scam and fraudulent websites. So if the logo seems right, but the information seems wrong, stop, pause, and think. And when in doubt, we have two episodes on fraud prevention now. So come back and watch both episodes with Acting Sergeant Jennifer Horner. Please share these episodes with your family and friends as we need to keep learning to protect ourselves from scammers. And if you like this video, click like. Please also read the disclaimer in my YouTube description because it really is important. And please look out for my next episode and remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You'll automatically get new video alerts and follow me on Twitter at Enamovsky. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe. Bye for now.